Hey guys, this is Callum from English Shooting and welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to be looking at three of the best 2.2 AR-15 rifles that you can buy to begin mini rifle or practical competitions with, or even just some general plinking down the range. Now, this isn't going to be a top three video, it is a recommendation of the best three beginner rifles that you can go out and get. Now, I've been lucky enough to review and get my hands on pretty much every single 2.2 AR and really every 2.2 semi-automatic rifle uh, available. So I have a, a reasonable amount of experience and this is coming purely from my opinion and my experience with these guns, but hopefully it's going to give you a little bit of an idea and a little bit more of a direction of where you can go and where you can start. No surprise, the first one that I'm going to be recommending as a beginner 2-2 is, of course, the Smith & Wesson 1522. This is a gun that personally I've owned for coming up to 10 years now, I've put over 30,000 rounds through it, and it has to be one of the most popular 2.2 ARs on the market. The 1522 puts a lot of people off because it is a full polymer construction. The upside to this is that it is incredibly light. It's actually half the weight of the other two rifles that we're going to be talking about. The downside of it is that it does feel a little bit cheap. It does feel a little bit toy-like, and it certainly put me off when I first started looking at these rifles and I know it puts a lot of people off looking at these rifles and really when you start shooting with it for me the lightweight aspect of it is a big big plus certainly for something like speed stills and and mini rifle where really you want to be agile you want to be moving direction very quickly uh, for for speed still with the muzzle and also you're on the move for practical mini rifle the other benefit of the construction is the cost you can pick up a brand new 1522 for about 600 pounds it's pretty much the cheapest 2.2 AR on the market and is certainly one of the better ones. Of course, a benefit of the AR-15 is the upgradability. There are a myriad of accessories you can go out and buy. This is a, a particular weak spot of the 1522 because it is not full mil spec. There are certain things you can drop in, but not everything. So it does have a proprietary handguard. Now, there are a lot of upgrade kits specifically for the 1522 to replace the handguard and you can also get adapter nuts but obviously if you have a mil spec rifle you wouldn't have to bother with this and it opens you up to uh, all of the mil spec handguards straight out of the box triggers as well you can drop in a aftermarket mil spec trigger or a mil spec fitting trigger but it does sometimes take a little bit of tweaking. Companies like Black Rifle have actually brought out a trigger specifically for the 1522, which goes to confirm that there are minor differences from a full mil spec rifle. Things like the stock, the grip, and the ambi release are all mil spec compatible, so you can buy any standard AR bits and drop them on. Another consideration is the charging handle as well that is proprietary it's a slightly different length to a mil spec rifle there are a couple of companies that make aftermarket charging handles if you want to go for a full metal one away from the polymer but these usually cost a disproportionate amount because they are made specifically for the 1522 but overall it is a cracking rifle a 10 out of 10 for reliability again 30,000 rounds put through mine and it's still got the original extractor the original firing pin and if you feed it the right ammunition or well, the the good stuff say cci mini mag or cci standard you won't have an issue at all with it and it's also very good at running the cheaper stuff as well whereas other rifles will begin to struggle the next rifle is the L119A22 from Cotswold Classic Arms. Now, Cotswold Classic Arms is run by Otto. I highly recommend just going and speaking to Otto if you're interested in a 22AR. He builds 
many different configurations. He builds the battle arms as well, but he's also brought out his own take on the Special Forces L119. This gun in 2.2 has a aero precision upper and receiver set and uses a CMMG conversion kit. Now, usually when you start looking at conversion kits, you are going to start compromising slightly on the reliability however Otto is a specialist in this he doesn't just drop it in and send it out to you he really does fine tune and fettle and adjusts everything that needs to be to get the rifle running like a dream the demo models that we've had a play with have again been 10 out of 10 in terms of reliability and again it's going to be on par going into competition with say a 1522 i really don't think you're ever going to, going to be let down personally on the l119 i don't particularly like the handguard that comes on it this is something that you could potentially at a additional cost have changed but it is full mil spec so you could later down the line change it out change it out for any other mil spec handguard and then also everything else on the rifle because it is an aero precision upper and lower receiver set it's all fully mil spec technically you could remove the cmmg bolt conversion kit put a 223 barrel on it and turn it into a 223 full bore semi-auto laws dependent on your uh, on where you are based and which country you're in but every other ar-15 accessory available you can put in there the cost as well i can't really believe it's as low as it is is 1045 pound you also get the choice of two barrel lengths for this at no additional cost it's completely your choice so whilst it's almost double that of a 1522 you are getting a full metal full mil spec 22 ar and that's going to restrict you less than if you go down the 1522 platform certainly one to consider certainly one that a lot of people have had a lot of interest in and at 1045 pound for an aero precision receiver set full mil spec 22 ar i really don't think that can be beaten yes it is going to be slightly heavier because of the full metal construction you are looking at about double the weight over the 1522 but there's some people that just get on better with the weightier rifles certainly have a lot more confidence in it and if you're looking for a general plinker and you're looking for something that's going to be a lot closer to the 223 bigger brothers then this is going to fit the deal perfectly the last rifle that i would strongly recommend looking into is the Lantac LASF 15. Whilst I'm not a particular big fan of the company, I really can't argue with the gun. The quality and fit and finish and reliability of this gun is superb and the price point isn't bad at all. Coming in for, I believe, the longer version, the 16 inch barrel, at £1,100 and £1,270 for the shorter compact model. This gun is again full mil spec. You're looking at a full forge receiver set and you're going to be able to drop in any accessories from an AR that you want but the rifle as standard does come pretty kitted out and whilst I am a huge fan of the uh, rifles that Otto builds I will say that I feel that the Lantac is overall a more sort of finished and complete package in the quality I would probably give the quality of an L119 say an 8 out of 10 and I would give the Lantac seriously a 10 out of 10 the fit and finish and overall quality of the rifle was superb and being that full weight full metal mil spec rifle if again you're looking for something that is going to compare close to a 223 brother and you want something maybe to train on with 22 long rifle versus the more expensive 223 then you're going to be able to switch between a, a Lantac or even the L119 to the 223 quite easily and be more familiar with the weight and the way that the gun is going 
to handle. My experience of the LASF-15 has been really, really good. The reliability was great. The rifle performed as you would expect it, was accurate, and I was overall really impressed. If you are on the edge between, say, the Cotswell Classic Arms L119 and the Lantac LASF-15 because you really need to have that full metal, full mil spec rifle, then my two penneth, as it were, would be to get in contact with Otto or potentially look at a second-hand Lantac. Lantac don't have the best reputation in terms of customer service and certainly when things go wrong, they don't seem to stand behind and support their customers and being on the more expensive end of these three rifles, you're paying that sort of money, you want to know you're going to get something good and you're going to be supported. Otto will do absolutely everything if there are any issues to, to help you out and I feel that you're going to have a lot more uh, sort of better customer experience with Otto and Cotsworld Classic Arms. So if you're on the edge of either two, I would personally lead, lean towards uh, Otto and Cotsworld Classic Arms, but certainly can't miss off the LASF-15 from this list, just because still think it's quite a good value for money rifle. One last thing to add about all three of these rifles is that they all come with 1522 magazines. They will have the uh, conversion kits on the L119 and also the LASF-15. But for me, this really goes to show the, the power and reliability of the 1522 platform. For all of these rifles to be using these magazines goes to show that Smith & Wesson really did hit the nail on the head with this gun and certainly the magazines in terms of reliability and overall usability so if you're thinking about any of these three rifles i would start buying the magazines now because you're most likely going to be using them they can be sometimes difficult to get a hold of they're in high demand a lot of the time because so many different platforms seem to use them or so many different rifles seem to use them but yeah it's a it's an interesting thing that actually the three in my opinion best starter rifles have all use these magazines and again that just goes to lean and show what Smith & Wesson have done with the 1522. But there we go, three rifles that could get you started and get you started at a very good level within practical mini rifle or IPSC mini rifle or whatever sort of shooting you want to do with it. I really don't think you can go wrong with any of those three rifles. You're just going to have to really make the decision of if you can live with a polymer, whether you've, you want a polymer or it's going to be full metal or mil spec, and then obviously budget. If you are really constrained by budget, that is what's going to sort of force you down the 1522 route, but still at £1,050 and even at the upper end £1,270 uh, for the L119 and the Lantac LASF-15. It's still in AR world not a huge amount of money. So there we go guys. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people saying well what about the Chris? What about the Tipman? This is, this is just about my experience with these guns and personally I would go for the three that I've recommended over anything else else any day of the week based on my previous reviews and previous experience with them but there we go i really hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful if you have please give it a big thumbs up and please consider subscribing for any future videos and as always guys i hope to see you soon